1 Peter 4, starting in verse 7. This is what Peter says. The end of all things is at hand, and therefore be self-controlled and sober-minded for the sake of your prayers. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Show hospitality to one another without grumbling. As each has received a gift, use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. Pray with me if you would this morning. God, we, uh, we come to you this morning and uh, God, we want to tell you that we are so grateful to be in your presence this morning. God, we are so thankful that, that we can come into this house and that we can worship you, Father. And Lord, we thank you for your grace. God, we need it ever so much this morning. And God, I pray that you would just uh, bless these few minutes that we have together. God, I pray that you would bless my tongue to speak the words of life. And that you would open our ears and our hearts to receive your message today. God, uh, I pray that you would be sufficient where I am insufficient. And that your grace would be made perfect in my weakness. Lord, I love you. And I thank you for everything. And it's through Jesus we pray. Amen. So, how did Thanksgiving go? I hope it went good for you. Uh, I got to eat plenty of turkey, and I hope you did too. Uh, took a little turkey coma the other day. Uh, just uh, had some great meals. and I hope that at some point in the last few days, or maybe the last week or so, you took some time to spend with the people that you love, because that's what the holidays are all about, spending time with those people that you love. And, you know, there's something special. We live in this fast-paced, high-tech world, and it's, there's something special about taking a little bit of time out of your busy schedule to just sit down and eat with the people you love. And I hope that you got to experience that over the last few days. And uh, I think that, um, that there's some people who are just awesome at putting on dinners, right? When, like when this person, it don't necessarily have to do with the food, it, it's just the person. And when this person's putting on a dinner, you want to be there. Do you know a person like this? Because they're such a great host. Do, do you know people like this? Oftentimes, it's you grandmothers who are such uh, great hosts and we just love to be at your dinners because uh, you're so loved. You're great cooks, but even more than that, you welcome us in and, and you love on us and I think there's a lot to be said about that. Um, people who are good at hospitality. Do you know somebody like this? Yeah. Amen. Hopefully you do. Uh, if you don't, I could give you some names of people and you can go crash their Thanksgiving or Christmas dinners from now on. But uh, I want to ask you this morning, what comes to your mind when you think of hospitality? Hospitality. Maybe a person comes to your mind, maybe that person who's great at dinners, uh, maybe, it, maybe the person's no longer around, maybe it was a grandma or a great-grandma, uh, maybe it was uh, a restaurant that you've been to and they just had incredible service and they made you feel really welcome, or, or maybe it was even a hotel that you've stayed in at some point and they just uh, were great at hospitality, they just made you feel welcome and loved. When you came in, have you uh, ever experienced good hospitality? Think that we all have at some point. Um, we think of a lot of things when we think about hospitality, but you know, oftentimes we don't think that that is how we should be defined, both as individual Christians and as the church. We don't often associate hospitality with Christianity and I think that it is uh, intertwined and it's an important part of our lives that we be hospitable people and uh, I want to show you that today 
And uh, 1 Peter, which is what we just read just a second ago, was written by Peter who was one of Jesus' closest disciples. He walked and talked with Jesus over uh, three and a half years. And he got to know Jesus. He walked by Jesus daily. And Peter founded the early church and he was writing this letter to some Christians who were Jewish and non-Jewish in the region that we now, now know as Turkey. And these people were under terrible persecution uh, by the Emperor Nero. And they were just facing some horrible, horrible circumstances. And Peter writes this letter to encourage them. And then towards the end of the letter where we picked up, he says, Above all, which means more importantly, most importantly, if you forget everything that I've told you so far, Here's what you need to do to stand strong in the face of persecution. Above all, keep loving each other. Keep loving each other. And then I think he takes it a step farther by saying, don't just love each other, but be hospitable to each other. This is Peter's key to success in the face of persecution. It's the key to getting through the hardest times in life. He says, be hospitable to one another. Now dictionary.com defines hospitality as the friendly reception and treatment of guests or strangers or the quality of or disposition of receiving and treating guests and strangers in a warm, friendly, generous way. But the Bible would define that and take it even a step farther. The word uh, that we translate hospitality, I'm not going to even try the whole word, but it comes from two Greek words that are put together to make up a singular idea. And here's what those words are. The first one is phileo, which means... Brotherly love. To love someone like a brother. It's where we get Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. That means that you love somebody who is close to you. A important, a close kind of love. And the second word is xenos, which means a stranger or an immigrant. And so... When the Bible says hospitality, it literally means to love a stranger like you love your brother. So hospitality, it's a Christian characteristic. And it's a biblical idea that we see from the very beginning all the way throughout Scripture. In the book of Genesis, we see Abraham welcoming uh, the angels uh, right before the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. We see him welcoming in Melchizedek, uh, the high priest. We see Moses welcomed in uh, to Jethro's home and to his family in the book of Exodus. And in the book of Exodus, we also find some laws surrounding hospitality that made it illegal to even mistreat someone who was an immigrant or a stranger. It was required to be hospitable by the law of Moses. We see the prophets welcomed into families and into homes. And in the New Testament, we see Jesus portraying hospitality over and over again. Jesus, if you looked at his life and his ministry, uh, Jesus really didn't do the events and the programs that we've become familiar with. But hospitality was the uh, discipleship strategy of Jesus. Jesus didn't plan big events. He ate big meals with people he may or may not have known. Sounds like a good idea to me. But Jesus, you see him constantly welcoming people in and then sitting down at a table and sharing a meal with those people. Now some of those people uh, were good people, Pharisees, and some of those people were uh, People who nobody wanted to be associated with. They were thieves, murderers, prostitutes. They were uh, tax collectors and every other despicable form 
of human beings. Jesus welcomed every single person. Jesus was great at hospitality. And then after Jesus dies and is resurrected and starts the first church, we see the first church take up the mantle of hospitality and they begin welcoming people into their homes. And that's how the first church grew. They would welcome people into their homes and they would feed them meals. Every time you see the, the first church meeting in the book of Acts, they're eating something. Uh, that's why we know they're Baptists. And uh, it's, it's a joke, you can laugh. But the people were constantly gathering for food and fellowship and prayer. They were masters at hospitality. They were constantly meeting together and praying and eating. And so the idea of biblical hospitality is about inviting people into your life. Into your life to do life with you. It's about inviting outsiders into your circle. Biblical hospitality begins when you invite people into your space and invite people to be close to you. And here's the goal, in order to connect to their hearts. See, the idea of biblical hospitality is not to have uh, the best food or the cleanest house or the best decorated house. Biblical hospitality is about connecting to people's hearts. It's about touching people's hearts, that your heart connects to their heart. Here's how I know that, because I've been to plenty of nice houses, and I've eaten plenty of nice meals, but I walked away not feeling connected to those people's hearts. It's not about great food. You don't have to be a great chef, and you don't have to have this big, great house to be great at hospitality. It's about going the extra mile to connect to people's hearts. And so, the way that you're great at hospitality, the way that you do this the way that it ought to be done, is to make people feel special when they're in your house. If hospitality was about great food or a great home, people would leave and they would feel better about you. They would think, man, they're a great chef, or uh, they're a great housekeeper, or they are great at decorating, or man, they have a lot of money. But hospitality is not about making people feel better about you. Hospitality, the goal of hospitality is that when they leave, they feel better about themselves. Just because they were with you. So, hospitality is not about how you cook or how you decorate. It's about making people feel special. Your goal as they come into your house is to make them feel like they belong. To make them feel like they are part of your family. Hospitality is about making every single guest in your house feel like a guest of honor. It's about making every single person feel honored and respected. It's about making people feel comfortable in your house. And so, hospitality is thinking of yourself last. It's about thinking of others first and yourself last. And here's what separates good service from good hospitality. Service is about what you can do for someone. But hospitality is how you can make that someone feel. Here's how Maya Angelo puts it. People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did, but they will never forget how you made them feel. It's all about making people feel special. And so you can be just as hospitable over a 
bunch of Little Caesars pizza as you can be over filet mignon. But if you want to try to be hospitable over filet mignon, I'll come and, and test drive it for you. Okay? <laughs> Hospitality is about investing your time, energy, and resources into people in order to see God change their lives. Hospitality changes people's lives because people may turn down an invitation to come to church, but rarely will they turn down an invitation to come eat at your home. Hospitality is the first step in Christian discipleship. So do you have a lost friend? Somebody that you would like to come to know Jesus? Then you can invite that person to your home. And you can break bread with that person. You can eat with that person. You don't have to have a sermon prepared when they get there, that when they walk through the door that you start preaching or anything. Just go the extra mile to love them. And to make them part of your family. Do you know they have a a favorite food? Have that prepared for them. Go the extra mile to make them feel welcome in your home. Do you have a friend that's going through a hard time? Maybe they're going through a divorce or maybe they're going through the loss of a loved one. Invite that person into your home. Bring them close to you where you can connect to their heart. Love on them. They just need somebody to listen and somebody to care. Bring them in. Show them that you love them. Do you have a person that you'd like to see to come to church or maybe back to church who has left? Invite that person to eat at your table. Show them that you care. Show them that you want them to be close. Build a relationship before you try to invite them to come to church. Before you invite them to Jesus, invite them to your home and connect with those people. Do you see a new family coming to church or do you see a new family moved into your neighborhood? Invite those people into your homes. Connect with those people. Invite those people to your house. It's hospitality Uh, can involve your friends and family, but true hospitality is when you invite people outside of your circle into your circle to be a part. So you can be hospitable with your friends, but it's better when you invite somebody outside in. And so here's what I want you to do with what I've gave you so far. I want you and your family to sit down and I want you and your, your husband or your wife and your kids to, to talk about somebody that you know who you can invite in to your circle of friends. Somebody that this month you can invite into your home to feed them a meal and to love on them. And then talk about how you want to go the extra mile to make them feel special. Talk about what you're going to do and how you will love them when they get there. Then invite them. Invite somebody into your home this month. Bring somebody into your circle this month. It's the holiday season and there are loads of people who don't have a family to celebrate with. Bring those people into your home. If you know somebody who may not be getting a, a Christmas dinner this year, Bring those people to eat at your table and to eat with your family. Make them a part. Can you do that? Absolutely you can. The same principles that I've been talking about for your home, it also works right here at this house. We should be applying those same principles of hospitality right here in this house. When people come here, they should feel welcomed and loved. We should go out of our way to make them feel comfortable because they belong here. When someone comes in, don't wait on somebody else to greet them and to love on them and find out their name. You go and you love and you care and you bring them into your family. 
everyone who comes in should feel that we love them and that they can be a part of this family. The church should never be accused of being an exclusive club where only a few people belong. Because the church is all inclusive. We will take anybody, red, yellow, black, or white, we will take anybody from any background, from any uh, faith background, we will bring you in and we will love you. Because that's what we've been called to do. We may not agree with you about everything, but we will love you through anything. It doesn't matter your past because everyone belongs. Every single person who walks through our door should be treated as an honored guest. We should love them and respect them like someone famous had walked through our door. Go out of your way to love people who come into our house. This is our house. You have a house out there, but this is our house as a family. And we should make people feel welcome here. Because when they feel welcome, their life can be transformed. And guys, I just want to let you know, we might not always get this right. But, but our goal should be to love people with the same unrelenting love that Christ loved us with. Here's the deal. We invite people into our families because we too were invited into a family. The family of God and God went the extra mile to include us in what He was doing. God made us part of His family. God is great at hospitality. We accept people into our lives and into our church and we take them with all of their mess and all of their mess ups and their mistakes because Christ accepted us with all of our mess ups and all of our mistakes. We accept people. We forgive people because we were accepted and because we were forgiven. If you want a lesson in hospitality, all you have to do is look back 2,000 years ago and you'll see a man named Jesus Christ Dying on a cross with arms open wide. Saying, whoever will come. I will accept. Every single person is welcome. Every man, woman, and child, you are invited close to me. You are invited to be a part of what I am doing. And you are invited to be in a relationship with me. When Christ died, he died for the sins of the whole world so that everyone could be brought close. Relationships that we didn't deserve. Love that we didn't deserve. Grace that we didn't deserve was poured out on that cross. The cross was Jesus thinking of us before he thought of himself. He was putting us before him. He went out of his way to make us feel accepted. And so if Jesus didn't exclude anyone on the cross, who then can we exclude? If Jesus invited everyone, then we invite everyone. And if Jesus welcomed everyone, then we welcome everyone. Let's pray. God, we come to you today. And Lord, we thank you that we have been invited in. God, we thank you that we have been accepted into your family. And God, I pray that the thoughts of that would provoke us to action. And God, that we could show people that you love them. And God, that by the way that we love people and by the way we accept people, God, that they would find out that they can be loved and accepted in a far greater way by you. God, I pray that, that we could be a witness to this community and to our families and to the people around us, God, that that they could see that they are accepted and that they are loved. 
God, I, I pray that in this season, God, that you would send us people to invite in. God, that you would put somebody on our heart to invite into our families and invite into our homes. God, give us opportunities to show hospitality. And God, I pray that lives would be changed forevermore by the love that you are showing through us. God, you are so awesome. You are so awesome, and we thank you for what you're doing in this house. God, we love you this morning, and we thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, if you need uh, to talk about a per personal relationship with Jesus, I'd love to talk with you about that. If you have something going on in your life or you need to pray, and you need me to pray with you, I'd love to do that. There's people here who will talk to you and love you.